All right, welcome to our webinar today. We want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to come on and join us. Uh, we have an exciting topic today, why and how to use Heart Zones Move in your PE programs. Um, we have a lovely uh, <laughs> few hosts today who are going to share their experiences uh, about teaching in general and how they integrate technology into those PE programs. Um, led first and foremost by today's host, Mr. Joe Gooden, the Vice President of Heart Zones. Joe, can you hey. say hi? Hey, everybody. Followed by Dr. Nicole Smith, coming to us today from Fresno State University out here in California. Uh, Dr. Smith coordinates the Kinesiology Physical Education Option and is also a faculty fellow in the Central California Children's Institute. Nicole, can you say hi for everyone? Hi, everyone. Coming from Thanks Fresno. For us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Can you uh, tell everyone how long you've been with Heart Zones here, Nicole? How long have you been using it in your in your uh, university? Yeah, we've been using Heart Zones uh, since I started here in fall of 2016. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Also joining us today, coming in from Wentzville, Missouri, is Amy Schulte. Uh, Amy Hello. is a teacher of 21 years experience and is the 2020 Missouri Shape PE Teacher of the Year. We're very lucky to have Amy here today. How are you doing, Amy? Good. How are you doing? Doing great. And how long have you been using Heart Zones Move in your schools? Well, let's see here. I, I would say about six years, five to six years. Cool. Very cool. All right, coming in from Minnesota, uh, the lead PE teacher at Stillwater Area High School for 27 years, as well as the football coach, the boys hockey coach, the girls hockey coach, and the strength and conditioning coach, uh, Mr. Daryl Salmi. How are you doing today, Daryl? I'm doing well, thank you. You're giving me a little more credit than I deserve. <laughs> I'm one of the football coaches and have been a coach in many of those sports, but thank you, yeah. No, uh, enjoy using Heart Zones. I've been using it for about eight years now. So uh, always new and interesting things coming our way. So certainly appreciate that. Thank you for joining, Daryl. And last but definitely not least, uh, coming in from Wisconsin and the school district of Lodi, the new principal there, Mr. Eric Schooneman. Uh, Eric was a PE teacher for 17 years at the Sauk Prairie School District in Wisconsin and has now bumped up to principal. Hi, Eric. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We were, I was fortunate to use Heart Zones um, when I was a FIAD teacher for, um, I, th I think we used it for seven years. Um, and so um, it was a big part of what we did and still use it even today as a principal. Very, very cool. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Will Taylor. I'm here at Heart Zones headquarters in Sacramento, California. I'm the project manager over here, so I help out with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, and hopefully you've all seen my face before on a video call. Um, Joe, I think everyone has been introduced and let's get down to it. Take it away. Um, thanks, Will. And first of all, thank panel for, for joining us. Um, I do realize it's at, at the end of the school year for a lot of you. So um, I appreciate you taking the time um, out of your busy day. A uh, couple things as, as far as housekeeping, um, uh, Will is recording, of course. If you have a question, um, you can either type it in the uh, chat box, and that's in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, you'll see like a little, uh, it's like the third one over from the, uh, from the, from the left. Um, you can just type in a, a question, or kind of in the middle of the screen, you see a hand, and there you go. Um, and you also see a hand. So you can click on the hand if you want to ask a question, you can turn your, um, if you just want to do it via video or your voice so either way you can ask questions um as will said it is going to be re recorded um if well, we normally have a lot more attendees um, attending these webinars but like i said it's the kind of the end of the school year so i'm sure uh, teachers are are trying to get out of uh out of schools right now so uh, but this will be shown i'm sure hundreds and hundreds of teachers will watch it uh, in the future as well so kind of want to start off with um, and I do have, and I do have a, a you know, I've, this is it's kind of a round us a round table discussion, but I do have some slides I'm going to go through. I'm going to kind of start with you know who Heart Zones is um, for just uh, for our attendees who may not be familiar with Heart Zones. Heart Zones is an educational um, technology company. 
that uses wearable fitness technology and data-driven programs to engage, assess, motivate physical activity that empowers students to pursue healthy lifestyles. Um, you know, I should say wearable fitness technology, that um, could be heart rate, uh, it could be activity trackers, um, it could actually be um, uh, uh, um, fitness uh, um, uh, 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 treadmills and, and spin, uh, spin bikes. Um, with Heart Zones Move, it actually are able to um, connect and um, pull the data um, from those um, types of uh, devices. Um, and um, uh, we also um, are in the process of adding um, uh, our Apple Watch um, to be one of the um, sensors as well. Um, you know, one of the things that you know, we're talking about empowering kids to pursue um, safe and health, healthy life, lifestyles. Um, as we know, a lot of kids have Apple Watches and you know, Fitbits now. In a lot of cases, they don't really understand how to use them. So, you know, just having hard zones move and, and you bring it into your physical education classes, help the kids understand you know, what exactly does it mean, um, you know, to get your heart rate to a certain level, to get at that moderate level of physical activity, uh, to help them understand, you know, what it means just to, um, to exercise and get to the, you know, to the, uh, to the zones that are going to make the most sense and you know, help them um, uh, get the most activity and uh, you know, physical activity time. Uh, so, a couple other things, um, hard zones, are, we have three pillars. Um, uh, hard zones actually um, uh, uh, produces and um, manufactures, I guess you'd say, and, and uh, uh, um, videos and charts, uh, our Smart P curriculum. As far as our technology, we have a couple different technologies that we, we have. Uh, for our online uh, system, we have um, hard zones EPE. Uh, and then for our group system, it's Heart Zones Move, which is really what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we also do professional developments. Um, Dr. Deb Berkey um, heads our training division, which um, we do trainings throughout the country and do presentations at a lot of the state um, conferences as well. Um, Beth Kirkpatrick is also part of our team. Um, she was the very first physical education teacher to really start using heart rate in uh, her gym back in the 80s. Um, so Beth is on our team as well, and you'll see her um, uh, around as we go through. But uh, as I said, there's two different solutions we have. Um, the Hard Zones Move solution is our our group system. Uh, and you can see we use use the big board to be able to um, project uh, heart rate and uh, physical activity and uh, step track information um, up on the big board. And then also we have, like I said, online PE, which is our EPE solution. <clears throat> um, just some quick facts, uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll ask our questions to get our team, the, our panel involved. Um, um, Hard Zones Move was developed by PE teachers for PE teachers. And actually, Daryl Solomon, who was on this um, on the call, uh, he was uh, he and the whole Stillwater team was instrumental in helping us to design um, the Hard Zones Move um, solutions. So um, it is made for physical education. We um, show data points like MVPA, uh, moderate vigorous, vigorous physical activity, um, you know, just the data points that physical education teachers use. Um, we do have a live big board, um, which you see uh, here as well. The sensor we use is the blink armband that goes on the forearm. Uh, it does have on, it does have online, uh, or does have memory uh, as well, onboard memory as well. So um, if your students get outside that range of the, the sensors, uh, no data is lost. Um, it's not a watch. Uh, we have a, a lot of people you know, um, use watches, but it's not as complicated as a watch. It only has one button. Uh, so there's no buttons to break, um, a lot easier to use. Um, I think we've, um, Daryl and his team has, have been using hard zones, I guess it's really probably closer to nine years. And I can't really think of too many sensors that we've actually returned from, um, from Stillwater. So um, extremely uh, durable, um, last uh, at least eight years so far. So um, it's all real-time data. There's no standing in line to sync or download data. Um, like I said, it's um, heart rate. It can be step tracking, cycling. We capture a number of different signals and um, devices. Uh, a couple other things, we do have a live summary. So you can do some um, some team goals um, using um, NVPA. Um, and like I said, we do capture NVPA, moderate physical, physical, vigorous physical activity. Um, one of the things that really separates us from our competition is we don't believe in using 220 minus your age to set the zones. Um, so we have something called Save the Peak, where you actually can run like a pacer test or some type of an activity where the kids are getting uh, their heart rate up to their max, um, to their max or their peak. Um, and the Hard Zones Move will actually capture that um, 
peak heart rate and set the zones based on their true ability. So um, all your students aren't going to have the same zones. You know, some kids may have some higher zones, some kids may have some lower zones, but it individualizes it for, for the students. Um, we have um, fit points and fit stars, as you can see, maybe you can see my cursor here coming down. Um, fit points and fit stars for goal setting. We show NVPA as a percentage. The CDC says kids should be sending 50% of their time in NVPA zone. So we actually show that as a percentage, a white star appears behind the NVPA when they've reached that NVPA goal. Um, also, um, our Heart Zones Connect portal um, is where you would set up classes and run reports. Uh, and lastly, but not least, um, it's very simple. That was one of the things that Daryl, Daryl's team and Stillwater told us was it's got to be simple and it can't take any class time away. So Heart Zones Move is extremely simple. I tell teachers it only takes about 10 seconds out of your class time to, uh, to really get started. So with that, um, we'll go over to our questions. Um, so um, our panel just jump in with, uh, you know, who, whoever you would like to respond to the question. But the first question is, why should, PE can, why should PE teachers consider incorporating heart rate sensors and activity trackers in their classroom activities? Who wants to take that first question? I can, I'll jump in quick. And then, uh, so I would say the biggest change for me uh, was that being able to make sure that I'm reaching all of my students. So, um, you know, a lot of times we use our, our observations and we try to get to know students. And when you have a heart rate sensor on a student, um, you're able to get to know them even better. And so um, there are times where um, I thought I needed to motivate some students when they came into my classroom. And when I saw them come into my classroom and saw their heart rate, I saw I didn't need to motivate them that they were already working really hard. And there were um, some students that I thought were working really hard. And when I put a heart rate monitor on them, I, I got to understand that I needed to push them a little bit more. So um, there's constant feedback. So kids are motivated. Um, and then the other piece is, um, not only do you get to know your kids and they get feedback, but then also um, you get feedback. So as a teacher, you get to see um, if what you're doing is working, um, not just in the results, but in, am I, do I have, are they moving enough? Um, am I setting up my lesson in a way um, that's getting the most out of my time with them? Yep. Anybody else? I think Eric. I think you basically covered what everybody else was yeah. would say, would say. So it's a, that's Eric, it. yeah, Eric it's, hit on a lot of things there, and that, that's awesome, Eric. Um, I, I share some of those same sentiments with you. Um, I do like that it's that engagement with a student can change um, at a middle school and high school level that I'm at. Uh, it can drive a lot of really meaningful conversation um, about health and fitness and goals. Um, and students really know that you're taking time to get to know them, as Eric said, and you can show concern for their well-being and support for their goals and fitness and things like that. And it leads in many directions. Uh, additionally, I like the excitement it provides um, from elementary through middle school, through high school. I've been in all the levels. Um, they get super excited when we when they start using heart zones they have a lot of questions and interest and curiosities so all of those things are 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 great reasons to use it okay good uh, so the next question is um, what are the potential benefits of using heart rate sen heart rate sensors and activity trackers for both students and teachers which I know maybe we kind of answered that question at, at the same time there so um, anybody else have any any comments that on on that uh i do um i would have to say that i really like how i can individualize my lessons for students and they can you know take a little bit more control of their fitness during our class i teach high school so they are able to be able to um, do a little bit more with it sometimes um, i can give them goals and as long as they're staying in those parameters they know that um, they're they're meeting what the objective is for the day and it works out pretty well it's very motivating for them. Okay. Thank you, Amy. I, yeah. Jill, I, I, I appreciate that response from Amy very much. And I was just going to add that um, I think for the teacher, it can be really helpful in knowing what appropriate decision to make next. So being able to see where kids are at and then make instructional decisions in real time that are data driven uh, makes, makes a lot of sense. 
Yeah, that's that's so true. And I, I kind of, as I listen, uh, think about just the opportunities to scaffold the learning, um, starting at a very basic level of what is heart rate and what is the importance of understanding that and tracking that and, and perhaps setting goals, as Amy had mentioned as well, um, you know, to moving into what is MVPA and how can I use that to teach, uh, even moving into nutrition and uh, how do I feel the zones? Um, what are complex carbohydrates and at what color zone, what zone level am I gonna be using carbs mostly, excuse me. Um, so a lot of different ways to, as I said, scaffold the learning and use it um, in ways that get the kids to think more deeply in a variety of areas regarding fitness and health. When I, th I would just add too, I agree. I think that, you know, for when it comes to, to um, students, even just to give them that power, you know, as a, a teacher, it was before more like I had to choose if I was going to work on a physical education skill or a health concept where having a heart rate monitor allowed me to do both simultaneously. And then um, for a student, um, it really helped them be able to see that they have power and control over their body, that their choices matter. And so, you know, if they uh, choose an activity, they can, they're going to see their heart rate go up or they can see their heart rate go down and it gives them a lot of power. And the time when we think about social emotional learning and everything else, mm -hmm. um, mental health, um, to give kids that power to be able to calm themselves or to um, get the fitness that they actually need, um, I think is really powerful for both the teacher and the student. Okay, good. Um, how can heart rate sensors and activity trackers enhance the overall effectiveness, effectiveness of physical education class, classes? For me, it just really ties in that physical literacy piece so that kids are really, they're able to see and understand more about what we're talking about and what we're wanting, you know, the results we're wanting our body to get, you know, in order to be, you know, a healthier, you know, human, <laughs> essentially, yeah. so that they become, you know, they just get more out of what they're doing. And then they understand what, you know, what it feels like when I'm doing this activity and what my heart rate really is getting to. And I know I, I even use mine for yoga class. And like you were talking about with the mindfulness stuff, they, they're really like, oh, wow, I didn't realize how hard I was really working <laughs> doing some of these flows. And, you know, and then they also learn how they can really bring those heart rate down. And it's almost like a game, you know, sitting there watching it and trying to see how low they can get their heart rate and control themselves with breathing. So there's a lot of cool connections that they start to make along, you know, using the heart rate monitors that I couldn't necessarily do without them. It really motivates them to uh, to try harder and to get up into those higher zones and um, be able to push themselves a little a little more too. I would just assume we're correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think there's a assessment component as well, um, especially in the middle school and the high school, um, where you can achieve your goals and it's not based on what a teacher perceives or see or didn't see, um, but it's you know, we're using data to support um, our assessments and, and moving forward into grading. So I think that helps a lot too. And that, that supports relationships as, as well um, if we use it in the right way uh, to lead conversations about assessment and achieving daily goals. So um, a huge benefit to assessment. Well, and I'll tie in, I saw Sally comment too with um, MVPA, but I think that that ties in because at the elementary level in my classroom, we had like 45 minute time periods. And so for us, um, you know, part of that assessment was where did you get, what level did you get to? And so did you, um, in our class time, at least you should have gotten to MVPA. So you should have gotten your white burst. Um, and then, you know, you set a goal off of your fit points to even challenge the next level. And then for us, it was like, okay, did you get to level three? Did you get 20 minutes in orange and red um, and during this time? And so, um, you know, for us to be able to assess not only the physical benefits, but then also then keep track of things like, um, you know, before we were looking at um, just our fitness assessments. And now, you know, we're looking at a recovery heart rate um, and different different aspects that are really helping us be able to get to know our students better in a real life way. And um, students also then being able to not be tied to a sensor, right? Like when we would 
take you know shut off the screen and ask them what heart rate they were at they they're pretty accurate um, and so they were able to learn to assess what their body was at and i think Gerald, at one of the trainings you had i think that you talked about the conversations that change and so i loved when we started using heart rate monitors and reports went home that my conversations with parents were about heart rates and health versus if you were doing juggling or bowling or um, units it was about about skills and health so i thought that helped our overall effectiveness too with connecting to home about things that mattered yeah yeah that's awesome eric yeah that's a great point to those that feedback that students and parents can receive on a daily basis or a regular basis however uh, the teachers choose to set that up that's that's a critical component that communication piece before we jump to the last question, I just want to stand back from a big perspective and just say that it's so important for physical education to demonstrate that there are meaningful outcomes that we're realizing and um, to be able to advocate and communicate with parents on meaningful outcomes is critical for advocacy. I just think for our profession, if parents can see that meaningful outcomes are happening uh, that their kids are focused on things that really matter. Uh, I think we have more leverage to make a case for why PE is needed and why we need to offer it daily at all grade levels. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's a mechanism that allows us to to possibly get there. So. Yeah, and so in, in the next, what impact can heart rate um, heart rate sensors and activity trackers have on student engagement and motivation near PE class. I kind of talked about, Amy kind of covered that, um, and Eric kind of talked about, you know, fit points in NVPA, where when kids have a goal, um, you know, if you give a kid a goal, a lot of times they'll um, they'll achieve it. Um, and I think that's one of the things that um, Heart Zones Move does, um, you know, it, it does engage and motivate uh, the kids. Even with just the presentations I do with kids um, that never used heart rate before, and they put a sensor on, what's the very first thing they do? They want to run around and, and see how high they can get heart rate. So, um, but yeah, engagement, you know, student engagement, motivation. Any any other comments there? I think we pretty much covered covered that. Have you ever done a, if you ever do an activity with it and then without it, right? The difference. Um, I mean, there's some instant activities that I I really loved, and then. Um, you know the heart rate monitors should be down for a day or, or something because because um our district issue but um, uh and then that you know also that instant activity um didn't look so great um because it wasn't as motivating uh without them being able to see their heart rate yeah we have you know, we have teachers tell us you know, story after story of maybe some kids that um just didn't like to exercise and maybe they had you know some some special needs issues or something that um uh, they couldn't get them to move and also they put a sensor on them and put um you know their they see their their tile up on the big board um also they're starting to move um you know so it does motivate and, you know help those um you know um you know special needs and adapted um physical education as well so um are there any are there any specific specific challenges or barriers that PE teachers face when introducing heart rate sensors and activity trackers in their classroom or gym, whichever you want to say it there. What barriers did, do you run into? Um, I know some, I, I can, I, I know we have some some te some parents that don't necessarily want their, their kids to have their name up on the big board. <laughs> um, so you can switch to numbers and that's kind of a, maybe a barrier with, with parents you run into what else uh, um, what other type of challenges you run into i think it's important for teachers to be open to adopting and implementing the technology i think one of the biggest barriers yeah. is opening up the the to the teacher that this isn't that challenging to implement it's it you can open it up out of the box unpack it within an hour figure out how to turn it mm -hmm. on and start using it. Um, so I think teachers, we it's important to advocate and prepare teachers to use the technology uh, to overcome those barriers. Yeah, I agree with you. It is uh, easy, but you have to have teachers that are interested in it. Um, if you have a larger department uh, or if you're going to a district or even in uh, larger, um, 
Just having key players, uh, we always have that in certain areas where people have interests in technology or, or different things. And, and getting that energy and, and using their, their uh, passions and allowing them to lead with you um, is very helpful. Um, I think that HeartZones has done a good job of providing support materials and uh, having access to heart zones people um, when we have questions is critical so um, I, I think a lot of the barriers quite honestly have been removed once you have teachers that have interest and in, and in dive in yep anybody else all right. Um, how can heart rate sensors and activity trackers help PE teachers assess and monitor individual student progress and performance? What's uh, how, do, how are you using it for assessment? I, I assume some are using for assessment. Uh, I think Eric kind of talked about MVPA um, and um, fit points. Um, how are you? How else is it? How, 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 how have you used it as far as your assessment and uh, as your student progress and performance? Yeah, so I mean, uh, we've used it in uh, adaptive PE um, as well. And so um, in adaptive PE, whether it's goal setting the IEP uh, based off of, um, you know, heart rate monitor data um, for that student. Um, and then, um, you know, as far as in the classroom, um, we've used it in lots of different ways, whether it's um, from like I talked about before at the beginning uh, uh, about us, you know, as we leave class, you know, what level did you get to? Um, but also using it to then take tie in that um, instruction into you know what does this look like what how would how would um, you know burning calories what would what zone would that be in you know to really be able to see if they can apply um, the knowledge that we're asking them um, to do so um, you know it enhances I, th I think all the other um, aspects of assessment that we do in, in class whether it's you know cognitive assessment or you know whether it's more of a you know a skill assessment. Um, I know I'm getting ready to uh, start in just a little over a week, summer school, and it will be an asynchronous course. And what I really like is each student's going to be um, issued a heart rate monitor, and they're able to work at their own time, at their own pace, you know, kind of as, as they need um, from home. But I do love that they can still get that instant feedback, even if they're not in class with us. But then I have them do reflective pieces with it. So if their goal for that session or that lesson was cardiovascular, okay, what heart, you know, what zone were you in? What activities were you doing to get yourself in that zone? So they're able to do a lot of reflective stuff with that as well. And it's been very helpful for our online learning. Yeah, one of the one of the things that Beth Kirkpatrick um, says all the time is assessing, not guessing. Um, so, I mean, if you don't have the data and you don't see how active kids are, I mean, you're really guessing, you know, through observation of how how hard they get the heart rate. I mean, I'll kind of use something Daryl said here. I think um, when the Stillwater School District start, first started using heart zones. Um, uh, the kids they thought working the hardest weren't working the hardest, and the kids they didn't think were working hard were actually working the hardest. And what groups? What groups were those? What's uh, who, who do you think the individual students were? Yeah, it was yeah. The, the obese kids. They thought you know the athletes they thought were working the hardest, but come to find out they weren't. And actually, in a lot of cases, the obese kids were out working. Um, you know the the athletes or the in shape kids. So. It definitely takes the guessing out of it. Okay. Yeah, that's true. And I, yeah, and some of the obstacles may be going back and others might have the question. I saw the battery charging and some things like that um, questions. And that's a great question. That's one of the assets to it, really. Um, I use them five hours a day, five days a week. And <clears throat> I just charge them once a week. So I'm, I'm getting a full week's worth of use without needing to recharge for my classes or anything like that. So um, very nice. Yeah, they, the sensors do have to have a 24 hour battery. Um, and then on our big board tiles, we actually show a, a battery indicator. Um, so teachers can kind of learn, you know, it depends on how much you use them throughout the, the week or through the, you know, through the day. Uh, most teachers just charge them once a week, like on a Friday. 
Um, it just takes two hours to charge them, but um, you know Friday is always a, a good day, and then um, you know they're ready for the for the next week when they come in on Monday. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, are there any specific um, activities or exercises in which heart rate um, sensors and activity trackers are particularly useful, and why? I know Daryl, I know you use them. Even use them, use them in your physical education classes. I think you use it for weightlifting. Uh, I think mm -hmm. you're for your, some of your football players as well. Um, yeah. Um, well, I could touch on that a little bit, Joel. Um, in my weight training classes, um, I'll use them a variety of ways. I'll use it as for MVPA and reaching that. And it depends on the workouts too, because you can set up a variety of workouts, um, whether you're doing power lifting or you're in a hy hypertrophy mode or you're in endurance mode or power mode or whatever that is, it's going to affect the heart rate because regardless of what we're doing, we're training one, uh, one or more of the three energy systems we have. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit too. Um, and heart using heart rate in there really supports that concept of um, the body's three different energy systems and two of the three require oxygen and you can get into some of that uh, with the students and they can see it and feel it through heart zones. Um, you know, uh, athletically, football, sometimes guys are coming off the injury and um, they might not be in the weight room with us. They're doing something cardio. Um, you know, I've had kids doing the cardio and uh, quite honestly, sometimes I'm at home when they're doing their cardio rehab so that when they come back from injury, they're ready. But I can see that data um, and I know what they've done and they love it when I get back to them right after they finish uh, in support of what they've done. Um, and they have that real-time feedback. Um, I had a, a offensive lineman at one point uh, on a spin bike and doing some conditioning on there so he's ready when he came back from an injury and um the first few days he didn't have a, a heart rate sensor on and uh once we gave him the sensor and he's like oh gosh i i thought i was working harder than i really was and this is a student that works out regularly he just didn't realize um he he could definitely do more to support his conditioning so having that sensor really helped um, I'll use uh, a tile too. I'll use that line graph tile of sometimes in weight training um, because those spikes that the kids will see will show um, the intensity change, of course, and uh, it shows that they completed another set and they can compare different lifts or weights and how that affects heart rate as well. So it allows me in terms of just assessing is did you do all the sets I was hoping you would do? I can see that quickly and easily as a teacher. So that helps guide me in, in who I need to have conversations with or help to motivate or even understand why maybe they're not able to work at a, whichever level it might be. How, how about as far as um, uh, fitness testing and the pacer test? <laughs> Um, anybody in this group um, still running the pace test? I know we have quite a few teachers that do. I know um, if you haven't seen Beth Kirkpatrick's webinar in the past, uh, she advocates for, uh, you know, it's designed as a maximal test, but it can be pretty hard on the kids. Um, she advocates starting to stop at 200. You know, count your lot, laps and stop at 200. So it accomplishes the same thing without actually getting up to that, you know, the higher intensity levels. What's everybody's thoughts on, on that and who's, are you and even using you know you have some kids that you know, may we know how the pacer test goes they run a couple laps and they say they're done and they're still in the, the blue zone <laughs> um so um it can actually be used you know make sure they're getting up into the yellow zone or maybe into the red zone um any comments or mm -hmm. anybody using the, the using it for uh, the pacer test well i think we're definitely trying to train the future teachers to use it during the pacer test and I want to um, take a step backwards and then a step forwards here. So I think heart rate is a really important indicator of fitness, but it's also an important indicator of just your overall health and well-being and your how you're reacting in the moment. So I think we should be monitoring mm -hmm. all the time. I think we need to encourage kids to monitor how low their heart goes when they're asleep at night. And I think we should teach kids to monitor in social situations that may be triggering or, you know, um, 
more stressful than they realize. So I think uh, we should be using heart rate all the time. And as far as the pacer goes, I think the first step is to get kids to give their maximal level. I think there's, we, we really don't know, but we've been collecting pacer data for a long time. I think a significant proportion of kids we know are not giving their maximal effort. And I think this is a good starting point to say, you know, you're, you're too low. Can you go a little bit higher than that? Um, and, uh, you know, maybe the pacer isn't fitness disguised well enough. Maybe we need to come up with more um, 2023 futuristic ways mm -hmm. of getting kids today to give a max effort. Um, you know, so that's, that's my version for this. I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah, totally. preach to the choir, but yeah. get a, the max Joe, effort. Joe opened up Pandora's box a little bit, right? And so, like, I think you know the the thing is, um, you know, um, I love on hard zones that you have a little switch, right? A little switch to be able to re to record and keep um, peak heart rate. And so, for for me, yeah. uh, when I was teaching, the first month of school, it was on every time, and so um, it wasn't just when we were doing pacer. Um, and there was times throughout the year where we turned it on again on certain activities that probably got a higher heart rate than, than the pacer did. And so, um, you know, I think that the other thing that we've learned is that there's some kiddos who a heart rate over 200 isn't really super dangerous for them. And there's some kids who will never even get even close to it. And so, um, but as far as where it's particularly useful, I think for me, uh, gradual release is something that, you know, in, in teaching that we talk about all the time. And, you know, when you have one of those activities and you're at the beginning of gradual release and it might not be as movement orientated because um, you're trying to help them understand something um, where now they're, they're standing there while they're listening or uh, not quite as active in the, this activity and they're moving, you know, they're doing jumping jacks, they're doing something because um, even though it's, it's not as intense an activity because we're doing that beginning of gradual release with something, um, they still can get the benefit out of it where before it was like, well, I can't do that activity because they're going to be not moving enough, you know? Um, and then, and then, um, breaks, uh, there's some kids, you know, like at the elementary school where we talk about activity breaks and I had a student who you would have thought needed a uh, heavy lift breaks. He needed to go get out some energy and we put a heart rate monitor on him and we found out his heart rate never came down. He needed a calming break. He didn't need a heavy lift mm -hmm. break. Um, and then the last thing, I know it's not the goal with heart zones, but like there are parts where I think all of us can attest where, you know, a parent gets a report and they're like, geez, this kind of looks concerning. Or we say something, hey, this kind of looks concerning. And they take it to their doctor. And next thing you know, they're able to, the doctor's able to diagnose something and help a kid be healthy and safe. Um, so, um, but those are some ways for me, it's been protect particularly useful. Yeah, I was going to say, we have yeah. you know, we have teacher after teacher has told us stories about they started using heart zones and had kids sitting during instruction and had a, you know, a heart rate up of, you know, 200 <laughs> or, you know, you're pretty high. So um, you, you, we don't we we don't sell heart zones move as a medical device, but you can spot maybe some underlying um, issues. Um, I heard a. Um, uh, a statistic the other day that one see uh, one in every uh, 100 kids have some heart condition so you can figure out how many kids how many students you're seeing in a day you know, more likely you're seeing a student that has a heart condition um so um uh, yeah so it does it, it help you spot maybe some underlying conditions and uh eric you know tim had had a question why not why wouldn't you want to have the recording feature on at all times um, i think yeah, the only thing would be is if you feel like you've gotten a good, accurate one, uh, because the pieces. So when you're recording, um, you know, there's a little bit of, of impact on their overall, um, um, you know, score. Sometimes it can impact that. And so um, and I think sometimes uh, being able to, um, you know, just I think kids just to know, like, hey, like we're going to go with what we got and we think it's a good picture. I will say if we you want to use elementary to high school. Um, if you have a peak heart rate on a kid in elementary and you can keep that information going, I think it would help you uh, be able to make sure you have accurate peak 
for them in middle school and high school, and maybe they might not be as motivated to get to their peak or might be more challenging. That's one thing that helped our district a lot. Yeah, yeah that's a good, uh, good point. Yeah. And that's a super important too, Eric, uh, finding that peak. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, and a lot of times as teachers, it's, it's great to find a variety of ways to find the peak. So you might, you know, toggle that and, and use the save the peak feature. So a variety of times, because you're going to do different activities. Um, some might give an honest effort in a pacer. I have a lot of thoughts on that and I'll share a few of them because I have to. Um, personally, I have to, um, also, um, you know what, there are a lot of tag games and relay games that kids love, and that's a great time to get saved the peak and they're, and they're laughing and their faces are red and they're enjoying it. I'm, I'm talking about 18 year old seniors now, not elementary kids. They love those games. It's a great time to get the peak. So that's what I try to do. Um, you know, and with the pacer, I think Beth's idea is outstanding. Um, if you're going to run that pacer, of which I've chosen not to for a while and haven't regretted it, um, but if I were to do that, I'd do it exactly the way Beth does uh, for the safety of it. Um, but when I think about social and emotional health, um, I'm going to do my kit best to motivate kids. Um, the pacer generally is not one of those motivators. Um, and I also, I've struggled to personally find a way to let them graciously bow out. Um, if they already know they're not really good at the pacer, they, they're bracing for this day when they're gonna be one of the first, if not the first, to stop. So what I would always do, if I were them, is say, hey, Joe, hey, Amy, I'm not, it's going to be tough for me. Would you mind supporting me by stopping with me? So every time a kid stops, I got two or three others stopping with them for s social support. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, how can I change that? I can change the setting. So using Beth's methods could help that because now you're using heart rates and, um, you know, it, it changes the dynamic a little bit subtly. And, uh, I always ask my kids, like, do you want to run the pacer after high school? And most people don't. I don't know if anyone in our crowd has run the pacer since high school. Um, but I ask them, would you like to continue tracking your heart rate and see how that improves over time? All of them are like, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do that. I'm, I'm sincerely interested in that, Mr. Salmi. So that's what we do. And that's how I use it. So... Um, I think it's so important using that recovery heart rate, getting back to what Eric said and getting that peak heart rate is critically important too, if you're going to use the two of them that way. So uh, certainly some really cool features that we can use with heart zones that way. Yeah, and I guess I should add, I mean, um, for the, the teachers who may not understand what that is, it's um, it's a feature within Heart Zones Move that you just turn on and it's going to capture that peak heart rate. And then when you stop the class, it's going to list all your students and it's going to show if their heart rate went up or down so you can actually select all if you want to change all the zones if they all went up or you can go through and select each each student where their zones went up you probably don't want it to go down always <laughs> so you're always looking probably to you know for it to go up and you can it's, I mean, it virtually takes you know 10 seconds to set the zones for all your students uh, in your class um, so extremely simple to use all right so let's go on to the next question here um, well, let's see, how, how can heart rate sensors and activity trackers contribute to creating safe and inclusive environments for students in PE class? We've kind of talked about that already, um, you know, as, as far as using it as a safety tool, you know, in, in the PACER test, what other, uh, we have any other thoughts there? Inclusive. Oh. Go ahead, Bill. Go ahead, Eric. You got it, Eric. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that kids are just looking at data. You know, like uh, they just look, it makes it really individualized. And so that's not so much, you know, I think people get worried about the board. And, and to me, the board hasn't really been an issue. Um, it's, it's all the, they're working on their, their numbers, their, their input, their data. That's what they're focused on. And so they're coming in and they can, they can leave class knowing if they did their best that day. Um, so I think it really does um, create a safe and an inclusive environment for students. Um, because it's focused on their specific feedback and especially with being able to save the peak it's not us putting in a formula it's 
it's individualized to that, that student and their body. And so um, to me, I think it's very inclusive. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great point. And just quick. a quick story, many of us that are using it um, have experienced this where we have a, a student or several students in a class that, um, you know, has struggled uh, and, and need to take a lot of breaks, maybe aren't moving as quickly as others in a variety of ways. And we've, in the past, maybe without the prior to using sensors, um, just always try to encourage them to do more when maybe we should have and supporting them in the fact that they they listen to their body and slow down and or stop um and then you have kids that you know that are in a maybe they're in cross country or swimming or some other endeavor that you know what they're in really good cardio shape and um but they're not really even ever getting into the yellow moderate level zone um middle moderate high moderate level even um so we're not supporting that student enough at this point um so they're doing a little less and not being supported with encouragement and setting goals that are going to ask them to do more uh, whereas we're asking the child that's actually listening to their body to to do more a dangerous situation one that many many including myself pe teachers have been in but uh now that I've had kids use sensors in terms of use creating this safe environment and inclusive, um, that nails it for me. Um, you know, I've I've had kids in the past that maybe didn't get the grade they should have maybe gotten. Um, whereas now, you know, there there might be some kids that um, need to slow down and listen to their body, um, and they're get they're earning an A in that area. Um, whereas there's some kids that maybe aren't earning an A and, and they are very capable, but they're not performing to a level that would be supportive of that grade. Yep. Okay, let's see. What's the next question here? How can heart rate data, how can heart rate data collected from mo uh, monitors be effectively utilized in tailoring and differentiate, differentiated instruction for students? Nicole, maybe that's a good one for you. <laughs> I, you know, honestly, um, I think we're having the most fun lately um, looking at uh, instructional decisions for the group. So one thing is tailoring for a group of students and knowing that time is being spent well and we're realizing the MVPA goal. And for, as a class, people aren't spending too much time recovering. You know, we're not talking for so long. Um, at the individual level, I think initially those initial assessments of peak and like trying to assess kind of where, how a student responds to a variety of activities are really meaningful because then you can use groups st strategically. And there might be a reason why you put students who are at a maybe um, they need it to be kind of lower engaged, less uh, intense activity to get what they need out of it. And for other kids, they might be in that higher intensity. And sometimes you might actually put them together with each other for the sake of motivation. So I think having that data in real time allows you to both kind of see how it's going in the moment. And then the reports after class help you put kids in meaningful groups, depending on what you're trying to accomplish in the next lesson and the next unit. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any, um, any thoughts there? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, are there any best practices or guidelines that P teachers should follow when incorporating heart rate sensors and activity trackers into their teaching approach? Carol, I know you have some thoughts on this. <laughs> yeah, um, I do. Um, yeah, I think it's really important because as we've all witnessed and experienced, um, when we've introduced our students to this opportunity to use the, the heart rate sensors, um, there's excitement and curiosity and things like that. And we, did, we never want to take that excitement and curiosity out of any students, um, you know, regardless of the discipline, quite honestly. Well, if I use this as a tool, I kind of call it a I gotcha tool. Um, they're not going to enjoy that very much. Um, so I try my best to to use it to lead conversations, 
but it's not because of heart zones or anything like that. Um, heart zones, heart rate sensors that, you know, they're struggling or not meeting the goal. It's usually a choice they're making. So we can talk about choices and things like that. Um, but certainly I don't want to use it as a, I gotcha moment because this is a tool that they have enjoyed and have been curious about and continue to wear. And I want to foster that as best as I can, as we move forward. Um, it, it, and those are just important things in everyday use of these. I think um, it's easy sometimes because I get that urge sometimes to really let them know like, see, but look, you're not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but over time, I've learned to control that urge and uh, be a more effective teacher because of it. I, I would just add to like, you know, to me, I think that our curriculum in general and technology in general are important, but they're never more important than the student. And so to me, when the student comes to me and says, this heart rate cannot be right, right? This is not my true heart rate, right? Like, I, I'm not doubting the technology. I think it, it, it's right on probably, but we can look at some things on positioning or different things. But to me, I always want to show them that I'm listening to them and that, um, you know, I don't believe a, a sensor over them. You know, I think that um, that's a really important aspect of it too, um, you know, because it does give you a lot of really good information. But that information is coming from that sensor being on a student, a human, and um, you know, you can't lose sight of that. Yeah, like you know, Daryl's always you know, preached to me: don't use it as "I gotcha." Um, mm -hmm. That's the worst thing, worst thing you can do. So, um, how can heart rate monitors be integrated into uh, existing curriculum standards and assessment methods? I know it's part of the state, most of the state standards, um, if it's in standards three and four, I know shape is in the process of changing those standards, but uh, um, so using heart rate you know, to satisfy or you know, capture data for the standards is one. Um, what, uh, what are other thoughts there? Honestly, Joe, I think it could be connected to all of them with a little bit of a creative, it could be the foundation of a program, you know, you can learn a lot about a student's level of engagement for standards one and two by looking at heart rate and maybe they're struggling with heart rate during the application of skills in a challenging context. So that's really, that really tells a lot. Like I remember in being a, an athlete and I remember our college coach would say, are you too tired to think? And actually, I think there were times when we were too tired to think and make good decisions. So I think you could make an argument and make a case for all five standards um, with a little creativity. For sure. Yeah, good. Uh, let's see here. Um, and this, I don't know if Will is still on. So what resources and support are available to help PE teachers effectively implement, implement heart rate sensors, activity trackers, and classrooms? Um, in classrooms, maybe this is the um, reason I called Will out because he's he's the head of our support team. So um, one of the things he does is still he, here, Joe. <laughs> yeah, so he on board he onboards all our um, our new um, teachers. Um, so when you purchase hard zones, you get at least, we say three hours of online training. Will, how long does it actually take you to train any uh, <laughs> any teacher on how oh, to use hard zones? No, nowhere near that. Yeah. I mean, we provide, you know, written tutorials, video tutorials, and then the, the onboarding call usually takes 40 minutes max. And we're going over everything from the basics to the more advanced stuff like save the peak and recovery heart rate tests and how to get the reports out and use the data for grading. All that stuff gets covered pretty quick. So we're there for you. Yeah, and then you know, of course, other yeah. teachers. You know, I've always send. <laughs> I, I probably pick on Daryl a lot, but I always send, you know, especially for teachers in the Midwest. I always put them in in contact with Daryl since he's kind of been using it the longest. So he's, you know, you guys are a great, you know, great tool as well. Um, so, um, you know, other teachers is one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast or doing this this webinar. So, um, yeah, it's a community. You know, people helping each other get better and improve and and always thinking about the students first is what i've noticed from every teacher i've talked to in the hard zones community so that's what's really nice about it uh we're coming up on about an hour joe maybe one more question okay um, um let's see uh let's uh, let's go to some of uh i got i think i got two more questions left or three more questions you and we'll kind of make this quick one um so so why did you select hard zones um, and 
30 seconds or less. <laughs> How about Amy? Is Amy still there? <laughs> I am still here. I am Why still here. Why do card sounds, Amy? Well, honestly, um, we were lucky enough to get a grant several years ago, and cool. um, the lead PE teacher at the time had introduced us to it, and I started dabbling with it um, a little bit then. But then, just as time has progressed, I've just I've really liked the features, and I like how um, how easy they are to use. Like talking about the technology before, I'm not great at technology, and I I can do it. And the kids are able to do it, and it's just been, it's been very valuable. I just really like the monitors, and I like the big board, and there's a lot of great, you know, mm -hmm. different pieces to it. To be honest with you, Anybody I can go there. Yeah, we we selected Heart Zones. Um, first of all, a teacher who was using it in a different district came and introduced it to us, and so said, "Hey, you got to try this." And so, um, you know, we started with two sensors and um, kind of rotated them and. And then, um, just like anything that's worth that's worth doing, um, there's lots of people out there who want to support it and care about health. And our our hospital in the area helped to get into all the districts in their service area and schools in their service area. So, um, you know, Tim, you asked about grant resources. Obviously, your state level um, physical education um, probably has some grants available. We've used those, um, but then also. Um, I would reach out to hospitals. Um, they're always looking for um, ways to to make an impact, and um, you know I think this is, is something that we've it's been a really good partnership. Obviously, they have a little different focus than us, um, but um, that's something that's really worked well for our area at least. Yeah, I was going to say, and there, as far as funding, I'll kind of jump in there. You know, there's a lot of COVID money that's out there now, um, $885 billion that have been distributed to, um, to school districts throughout the nation. Uh, a lot of that money has been spent, uh, and had, they have until October of next year, I believe, with the, the third phase um, to, um, to use that money. Uh, and then, as Eric said, if, if, um, if, if through the Affordable Care Act, I think it was, as far as Obamacare, where hospitals have to um, have community outreach programs. Um, so that's how Eric got his um, his monitors was through a community outreach program from his local hospital. So um, hospitals are a great resource. They have to, because they're publicly funded, you know, they have to have those um, outreach programs and what a better way, you know, to support physical education and, um, you know, in, increase physical activity and health, you know, than, um, you know, than hospitals. So um, that's another, mm -hmm. uh, Another good one there, and yeah, and on our website we have a number of different pages, you know, for funding uh, as well um, that you can you can check out. Uh, anybody else have any um, any reasons why they selected? Because uh, I think we're I don't want, don't want to go too fast too far yeah. past our so, um, Well, for us in Stillwater, um, we were looking at all all of our options. Um, we too got a grant and. We sat down with a committee of teachers um, consisting of elementary, middle school, and high school and and invited vendors in to help us uh, understand their products. And um, this was it um, because of the ease of use, because of there being a one button operation. Um, and we also got the sense that it was going to be um, teacher and education oriented. Um, and that was a huge plus for us. Okay, so now we got easy to use, teacher, education oriented, um, and we've never looked back. I mean, that's what sold us, um, you know, so that we could teach with technology and, and, and kids can learn and enhance that learning, that depth and breadth versus, uh, you know, trying to teach a technology full time. Yeah, and that's in simplicity. In simplicity, I'll go back to kind of what Daryl told us from the very beginning was um, to, to do two things. It's got to be simple, and it can't take any class time away from the teachers. So um, you know, it's extremely simple, and it takes virtually ten seconds. It's a one. It's really a one button push to really get you up and running. So that's that's kind of our theme as a company is simplicity. Um, so and that's worked out really well for us. Um, so. I think that's one of the major selling points for um, for Heart Zones Move. So I know we're up against our hour. I appreciate everybody um, sitting on our panel today. I appreciate all the attendees. I know it is the uh, end of school, and you know a lot of people are looking just to 
to get out and go to the beach. I'm looking forward to go to the beach. So I appreciate everybody who um, uh, joined us on the call. Um, it will be, it is going to be recorded and put on our website. So if you want to, uh, if you have other teachers that may be interested in hard zones, you know, um, send them to our website to watch this, this webinar, um, you know, as well. So uh, with that, I think I'll close the webinar. Uh, will, you have anything else uh, left? Uh, no, just with? thank you. Thank you so much for your time and the stories. I think it's really helpful to share with everyone. And uh, like I said, this will go out to hundreds of other teachers to to kind of spread the good word and and hopefully they come back with some other ideas too and we could pass those along. So thank you, everybody. Have a great evening and I'm going to end the recording. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank Thanks, you guys. Everybody. Bye-bye.